Your next outdoor adventure might come with an unexpected companion. And to freak you out further, ticks can actually wait in the same spot for months for you to stroll by. The result? Lyme disease. It's a stealthy invader that infects millions, but it can also mimic over 300 other conditions. So, is your chronic fatigue and joint pain from this guy or something else? Let's get you informed and keep you safe. Tick season is around the corner, falling between March to mid-May and then again from mid-August to November, but that's just the adult deer ticks. Young deer ticks, called nymphs, are active between May and August. Both can transmit Lyme disease. I've seen the impact of this infection firsthand and protecting yourself should be a high priority. These things freak me out. And a side note, I am most likely going to vacillate between saying Lyme disease and Lyme's disease. Every fiber in my being wants to say Lyme's disease, but it's not. It's Lyme disease. So I'm getting out ahead of this. Be kind in the comments. Don't come for me. So there are over 800 different species of ticks throughout the world, and they prefer to live in wooded or grassy areas or your backyards. Not all of them carry the Lyme bacteria, and most bites are harmless, but depending on your location, anywhere from 1% to 50% of ticks will be infected with it. And here we're just highlighting Lyme disease, but they can also transmit other life-threatening infections, including Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, courtesy of a tick with the same name, anaplasmosis from the deer tick, aka the black-legged tick, Pawasan encephalitis, also from the deer tick, and erdlichiosis, even sounds gross. Between 2004 and 2015, the CDC reported that tick-borne illness rates more than doubled from about 22,000 to 60,000 cases. And as of 2019, Lyme disease is the tick-related illness that is diagnosed most frequently. Now, I live in a very wooded area in Northwest New Jersey. So I have always been hyper vigilant checking for ticks, but even as cautious as I am every now and then, I'll find one on me or on the dog. Dogs are like furry subways for ticks, basically. They're so tiny that they can go unnoticed for a while before you feel something crawling on you. And it's usually a toss up for me. Do I want this to be a fat furry spider or a tick. Is there any good choice here? No. Not really. But what actually happens when a tick bites you? It's time to get a little gross. I'm not listening to this. But what I'm about to tell you, I didn't even know. And I'm even more freaked out. Most of you probably think that a tick will hang out on a blade of grass and you walk by and you brush against it and it sticks to your leg or your sock, right? Wrong. So wrong. Ticks? actually wait. Wait is the key word here. They wait on the tips of grasses and shrubs, stretching their front little legs out and sense for vibrations or a shadow where they'll detect carbon dioxide in an animal's breath or body odor. And then they can sometimes wait for months for a suitable host. They also identify well-used paths and when you walk through it, they just climb onto you and attach themselves by inserting a pair of cutting structures called chelicerae. Chili, I just keep, just go with it. These things. And a central stylet used for piercing the skin, which is this thing. Now, where might you have seen these before? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here. Right here. Yeah. And the good news just keeps on coming because after all of this happens, it also secretes saliva that contains anticoagulants that keep the blood flowing and prevents your immune system from recognizing and attacking it. And it's this saliva that may also contain the pathogens like Lyme disease. Now, once attached, 
it can remain that way for several hours to days. And as it feeds, it starts to look like this. Once it's finished feeding, it will detach from you and kind of just continue on its merry way. So at this point, if you find a tick on you and it looks like it's been there for a bit, what do you do? And easier things actually to tell you what not to do. And that's to grab the body and just pull. Because if it's in there deep, you'll wind up just separating the head from the body and then the head will remain in you. All right, so let's say you've been bitten. What are the signs and symptoms of Lyme disease and how can you differentiate them from everyday ailments? So anywhere from three to 30 days after a tick bite, you can have fever, chills, headache, fatigue, muscle and joint aches, and swollen lymph nodes. These can all occur without the rash called erythema migrans that everyone associates with it. Now, the rash does occur in approximately 70 to 80% of people and begins at the site of a bite about seven days later, give or take. It will gradually expand over several days and can reach up to 12 inches across or more sometimes. It'll be warm to the touch, but it's rarely itchy or painful, which is why it goes undetected. It's also important to point out that a small bump or redness at the site of a tick bite that occurs immediately and looks kind of like a mosquito bite is common. This generally goes away in about one to two days and is not a sign of Lyme disease. Days to months after a bite, you can experience an escalation of symptoms like severe headaches, neck stiffness, facial palsy, or drooping on one or both sides of the face, severe joint pain and swelling, particularly in the knees and other large joints, heart palpitations, also called Lyme carditis, episodes of dizziness or shortness of breath, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, and finally, shooting nerve pain, numbness, or tingling in the hands or feet. Some people may eventually develop post-Lyme disease syndrome, which is a common condition also known as chronic Lyme disease. And this is usually characterized by persistent musculoskeletal and peripheral nerve pain, fatigue, and memory impairment. There are several celebrities that have been diagnosed with chronic Lyme. A few that come to mind, Avril Lavigne, Amy Schumer, Justin Bieber, and Bella and Yolanda Hadid. And if I'm not mistaken, I recall something about there being a lot of drama around Yolanda's diagnosis because she went years feeling horrible and then it was eventually identified. Now, you can see that Lyme symptoms sound like a million other conditions and that's why so many cases go unchecked. And if that's the case, how do we test for it? Diagnosis for Lyme disease must be made by a healthcare professional that's experienced in recognizing it. It sounds elementary, but diagnosis is usually based on symptoms and a history of a tick bite. Blood testing specifically looks for antibodies that are trying to fight the bacteria in your blood. One of these tests is called the ELISA test, and you'll often have a second test, which is called the Western blot, which will then confirm you've been infected. All right, so what then? Are there effective treatments for Lyme disease or are you doomed to suffer if you're infected? Treatment typically involves a course of antibiotics which are most effective when started early in the infection. However, the effectiveness can vary depending on the stage of the disease and the following factors. Your age, your overall health, how sick you are at the time, how well you handle certain meds, procedures, and therapies, and your opinion or preference. Normally, antibiotics are prescribed for about two to three weeks, and the most common ones used are doxycycline, amoxicillin, and septin. Treatment will also be considered based on whether you've been bitten by a tick that tests positive for Lyme disease. And yes, if you find one on you, Keep that sucker because they will test it in the event you start showing signs and symptoms. Another consideration is if you're pregnant or if you live in a high-risk area. In cases of chronic Lyme disease, managing symptoms and improving quality of life 
may be the only primary focus of treatment. Basically, antibiotics prevent worsening of disease and may decrease the duration and severity of the symptoms. Honorable mention, in certain instances of chronic Lyme that cause severe neuropathy, IVIG may be considered as a potential benefit, but the best way to deal with Lyme disease, I bet you can guess what I'm going to say, is to not get it to begin with. You know how Dr. Mike says chest, chest compressions, compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. Chest compressions. Well, I am starting Lyme prevention, Lyme prevention, Lyme prevention. Avoiding tick habitats, wearing protective clothing such as long pants and sleeves, using insect repellents that contain DEET, and conducting thorough tick checks after spending time outdoors can help reduce the risk of tick bites. Additionally, promptly removing a tick if you find one on you within 24 to 36 hours can lower the likelihood of infection. People aren't able to become immune to Lyme disease, unfortunately. So even if you've had it, you can get it again. There is no vaccine. We came close in 1998 when Lyme Rix was initially approved, but it was yanked because it wasn't 100% effective. So if you ever come up to visit me and we take a hike or go camping, dress appropriately, meaning I will expect you to be in light colored clothing long sleeve shirts, socks, sneakers, no flip-flops. I know because October, June through October myself, I am in flip-flops 24 seven. But anyway, long pants with legs tucked into socks. Basically, this is what we'll both look like. On top of that, we'll be using bug spray, one that contains DEET, which will repel ticks, but it won't kill them. So if one happens to sneak in, it won't keep it from making us a snack. Products that have 0.5% permethrin do kill ticks, but they should only be sprayed on your clothing, not on your skin, and be very careful not to inhale it. The best and easiest approach is to treat your clothing and gear with the permethrin if you're outdoors a lot. And I have the products I use tagged through a link in my store. There's this one here and this one here. They're awesome. I have them. I, I used to rock climb and we use them a lot. It can be used to treat boots, clothing, camping gear, and it will remain protective through several washes. Alternatively, you can also buy permethrin treated gear. Afterwards, we're checking our clothes again for ticks. They can hitchhike into the house on anything, really. Tumble dry clothes on high heat for 10 minutes to kill ticks on dry clothing. If they require washing first, Hot water is recommended, but even then, a study from the Department of Agriculture found that most ticks survive pretty much all combinations of water temperatures and detergent types. So cold and medium temperature water will not really kill a blessed thing. Examine your pets to recall from earlier, I mentioned the furry tick subway. Yeah, they can fall off your pet and attach to you later. And this this has happened to me. I had one crawling on me that came in with cocoa. Shower soon after being outdoors within like two hours is best to help wash off any unattached ticks. Do a tick check using a handheld or full length mirror to look at all areas. So check under your arms, in and around your ears, inside your belly button, back of the knees, hair and scalp, between the legs, your groin especially, around the waist, all of the areas that are kind of dark and they like those those types of areas. And Brad Paisley has a great song about this. So for those that know, you know. Okay, so what should you do if you find one? Again, I mentioned some of this earlier, but it's so important, I'm going to say it twice. After you're done doing the boot and scoot and bug boogie, don't touch the tick with your bare hand. Use a pair of tweezers to remove it. Grab it firmly by its mouth or head as close to your skin as possible. Pull up slowly and steadily without twisting until it lets go. Don't squeeze it. Don't use petroleum jelly. No solvents, knives, lip matches, peanut butter. None of that fun. 
none of that fun stuff that worked for your grandma. Save the tick, place it in a plastic container or bag so it can be tested later if needed. Wash the bite area with soap and water and put an antiseptic lotion on, on it like Bactine or off first aid antiseptic cream. And then call your health provider to ask about follow-up and testing of the tick for the Lyme bacteria. Now, if you've been infected with Lyme and you are experiencing long-standing neurological issues, IVIG may be able to help you. So watch this next to get the full lowdown on how it works. So stay healthy and lucid.